particularly over the last period of weeks following the terrorist attack in Paris on November 13th and the terrorist attack in San Bernardino on December 2nd. Officials of Homeland Security, the FBI, the intelligence community, state and local law enforcement and Homeland Security officials have been on a heightened state of readiness to protect our homeland. People are anxious now. They should know and they need to know what their government is doing to protect our homeland. First, as the President explained on Monday at the Pentagon, we're engaged in a bombing campaign against the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria to take the fight directly to that terrorist organization. This has included training and equipping ground forces in Iraq and Syria. Two, law enforcement. The FBI does an excellent job virtually every day of detecting, investigating, interdicting, and prosecuting and preventing terrorist threats to our homeland. Arrests are made on a regular basis. Three, aviation security. Since last year, we've enhanced aviation security at my direction at last point of departure airports overseas with flights directly to the United States. I'm pleased that other nations have followed with near identical enhancements to aviation security. In July, <clears throat> I gave the new administrator of TSA a 10-point plan for improving aviation security and airport screening domestically. That plan has been and is being implemented on schedule. Earlier this year, TSA and I issued guidance with regard to airport security. More guidance on airport security is forthcoming. In response to the crash of Metrojet 9268, I directed further aviation security at certain airports in that region with respect to items brought on aircraft and an inspection and evaluation of airports in that region. Four, with regard to the potential travel and immigration to the United States of those who may be suspected of terrorism, last year and again this year, I directed a series of security enhancements to our so-called visa waiver program. I'm pleased that Congress is also involved in this effort to strengthen our ability to enhance the security of our visa waiver program. We routinely deny boarding and travel to those with potential terrorist connections into this country. At the State Department and at the Department of Homeland Security, we have in place now a multi-layered thorough process for vetting refugees, for refugees for resettlement in this country. This is particularly true with regard to Iraqi and Syrian refugees. The process is multi-layered, thorough, and takes on average 18 to 24 months to complete for every single refugee. This includes consulting databases and agencies in the law enforcement and intelligence community. As you heard the other night, the President has directed the State Department and the Department of Homeland Security to also conduct a review of the K-1 visa process, visas for fiancés, which we are doing. Under my leadership as Secretary, we in fact began to consult social media in connection with conferring various immigration benefits, and we will be doing more of this. Any reports or partial reports to the contrary are simply false. Five. Since last year, we enhanced our Federal Protective Service at a number of federal buildings around the country. Six, we continue to share information 
with state and local law enforcement around this country with regard to what we are seeing at the federal and international level. Director Comey and I routinely do this, and we'll be doing this again later this week in a communication with law enforcement nationwide. Seven, we continue to share information with private stakeholders such as business organizations, sports organizations, the NCAA, for example, the NBA, the NFL, for the same purpose, to share what it is we see. Eight, as should be obvious to the public this holiday season in particular, there is a heightened security and law enforcement presence at public events and public places across the country. Law enforcement, national security, homeland security personnel are working overtime to protect the American public and to protect the homeland. Nine, we are building relationships with Muslim communities across this country. We are calling upon Muslim communities and Muslim leaders to, in effect, if you see something, say something. ISIL has targeted Muslim communities across this country. We are building bridges with Muslim communities, encouraging them to work with us and working with them. These are just some of the things we are doing to protect the homeland. Finally, 10, public awareness, public vigilance, and public participation are important to our homeland security. This is what brings me here today, an informed public about our homeland security efforts and what we see can help. In 2002, we went to the color bars. Everyone remembers the color bars. Severe, high, elevated, guarded, low. One of the issues with the color bars is there was very little public commentary to go with them. And there's a certain de-escalation factor here. Once you elevate, it's difficult to de-escalate. In 2011, we did away with the color bars and created the National Terrorism Advisory System. The National Terrorism Advisory System has two levels to it, an elevated alert and an imminent alert. This system has never been deployed. It depends upon, for an elevated alert, a credible terrorist threat, which in the implementing guidelines means something very specific. An imminent alert warns of a credible, specific, impending terrorist threat against the United States. This, in my judgment, does not work in the current threat environment because it depends upon a specific, credible terrorist threat to something in the homeland. This system has never been deployed. It's time we change this system, and this is what we are doing and announcing today. We are creating an intermediate level to the NTAS system that includes an NTAS bulletin which describes general developments or trends regarding threats of terrorism. We do this in public speeches, in public statements. We do this for law enforcement with joint intelligence bulletins. We do this on a periodic basis. There are news leaks, anonymous sources from national security and law enforcement. We want to put in one place for the public to see what we are seeing concerning the homeland and what we are doing about it and what the public can do about it. So today, we are creating this new intermediate level to the NTAS system called an NTAS bulletin. This is a template for an elevated NTAS alert, which we have never used in the four-year history of this system. This is an elevated alert, which, again, depends upon a credible, specific threat. This is the template for a bulletin, which we are announcing today. This is general information for the public about the current threat environment, what we see, additional details, what your government is doing about it, 
and how the public can help. With today's announcement, we are also issuing an actual NTAS bulletin. The duration for this bulletin, and these bulletins should have a duration, will be six months to June 16th, 2016, from today. And in summary, what we are informing the public today in this bulletin, which will be issued today, is the following. We're in a new phase in the global terrorist threat, which has implications on the homeland, particularly with the rise in use by terrorist groups of the Internet to inspire and recruit. We are concerned about the self-radicalized actors who could strike with little or no notice. Recent attacks and attempted attacks internationally and in the homeland warrant increased security, as well as increased public vigilance and awareness. Though we know of no intelligence that is both specific and credible at this time of a plot by terrorist organizations to attack the homeland, the reality is terrorist-inspired individuals have conducted or attempted to conduct attacks in the United States this year. DHS is especially concerned that terrorist-inspired individuals and homegrown violent extremists may be encouraged or inspired to target public events or places. As we saw in the recent attacks in San Bernardino and Paris, terrorists will consider a diverse and wide selection of targets for attacks. In the current environment, DHS is also concerned about threats and violence directed at particular communities and individuals across the country based on perceived religion, ethnicity, or nationality. DHS and the FBI are providing additional guidance to state and local partners on increased security measures. The public should expect an increased presence of law enforcement across communities in the weeks ahead. More stringent security should also be anticipated at public places and events. This may include a heavy police presence, additional restrictions and searches on bags, and the use of screening technologies. The FBI is investigating potential terrorism-related activities associated with this broad threat throughout the United States. Federal, state, and local authorities are coordinating numerous law enforcement actions and community outreach to address this evolving threat. How you can help. Community leaders, co-workers, friends, and family can help by, by recognizing signs of potential radicalization to violence. For more information, visit nsi.ncirc.gov. Report threats or suspicious activity to the FBI or your local authorities. Contact information for FBI field offices can be found at fbi.gov contact us slash field. Stay informed. The U.S. government will provide additional information about any emerging threat as additional information is identified and not necessarily on a six-month timeline. The public is encouraged to listen to law enforcement and public safety officials. Finally, we urge the public to continue to travel, attend public events, and freely associate with others but remain vigilant and aware of surroundings while doing so, particularly during this holiday season. This is the bulletin we'll be issuing today. We want the public to have this. It will be on the DHS website. We want the public to be aware. We also want the public to be aware of all of the things that those of us in Homeland Security, law enforcement, and national security are doing on their behalf. Questions? Mr. Green. Well, this bulletin is one page, and I just read almost all of it to you. Um, it's important that we give the public concise but accurate information to the full extent we can um, that is not classified or law enforcement sensitive. 
um, because we believe that an informed public um, is good for public safety and homeland security. So this will be on our website. It won't just be there for a day. Those in the public can consult it on an ongoing basis about how they can help and how they can stay informed. This is part of our mission in homeland security, in my view. Yes, ma'am. Given the attack in San Bernardino and the other threats that you've outlined, is ISIS operating in the United States? There are a number of investigations by the FBI of potential plots, uh, those who may be involved in uh, plotting or planning terrorist acts. Um, and as I've said, the new environment that we are in uh, includes not only the potential for terrorist directed but terrorist inspired attacks. And as the FBI director and I have said many times, what we are concerned about here in the homeland are copycat like attacks um, and those who are self radicalized who may be inspired to commit terrorist attacks. And regrettably, we have seen that in recent months and recent recent weeks. So that is that is the focus of our homeland security efforts. Catherine. Just to be clear, was there ever any role that prohibited immigration agents from screening social media on these cancer visas? And second, um, Congressman McCall said the DNI provided evidence that ICE was trying to infiltrate the refugee stream. Do you believe that's credible? And do you think they've already done that uh, successfully? Two questions, two answers. First, prior to my time as secretary, uh, we had policies in place regarding consulting social media, which in my judgment, uh, particularly in this current environment, uh, were too restrictive. And so we began uh, to consult social media with regard to certain immigration benefits, the conferring of certain immigration benefits. Um, we began that earlier this year, uh, very early this year. And I think we need to do more of this. Um, there is open source. There is also private. Uh, and there are, there are postings. There are, and there are also communications involving uh, US persons. So there are some legal limits to what we can do. Uh, but it's also worth emphasizing that when we do the vetting for a lot of immigration benefits, we do consult immigration. We have intelligence community databases and law enforcement databases, but consulting social media is something that since I've been secretary, I believe that we need to do and we have begun that. Uh, with regard to your, your second question, um, we do have to be concerned about the possibility that a terrorist organization may seek to exploit our, our refugee resettlement process. That is true of this country. That's true of every other country that accepts refugees. That is why we have in place a very thorough multi-layered process for evaluation of refugees. I think it's worth emphasizing that it, the burden of proof is always on the refugee, the applicant for resettlement in this country. And in the absence of information, we either put that application on hold or, or we deny it. But um, this is something that we also continually evaluate. We provided additional enhancements with regard to those refugees from Iraq and Syria, and we're going to continue to evaluate whether more is necessary. Could I just be clear on one point? Was there a so-called secret policy in 2014 that prevented agents from screening Tashfin Malik's social media before she entered the United States? That would not be accurate. And it is also the case, you have to you have to also bear in mind, and I, I can't, I'm not going to comment on an open investigation. I'm going to leave that to the FBI. But as I'm sure you've seen, Catherine, there have been a number of public reports that um, whatever postings she did, uh, whatever communication she had, uh, she did so under an alias. Um, we have in place the ability to screen by consulting the intelligence community, by consulting law enforcement consistent with law, and we do that when we believe the circumstances warrant, and we're going to continue to do that. Yes, ma'am, right back here. Thank you. 
This involves a process of consulting the FBI, definitely, and a number of other uh, agencies in law enforcement and national security. But <clears throat> my goal here with these is to be able to issue these promptly. Uh, if we see a new environment, we're not necessarily going to wait until June 16th to issue another one of these if we think that the environment has changed. Um, but my goal is that we have an agile process. And so we could issue one of these, let's say, on a day's notice if we believe circumstances have warranted. In the past, um, October 2014, for example, after the attack in Ottawa, I issued a public statement about the things we are doing uh, to protect the homeland, how the public can help, and what we are seeing. That was a public statement on a sporadic basis. I think we need to institutionalize that process in this current environment, and that's what we're doing here today with this new level of bulletin that does not depend upon uh, a specific credible threat. Pierre. Some, some months ago, some months ago, and there have been periods uh, over the last 12, 13 months where we've considered using that prior NTAS system. But because of the guidelines, um, I didn't think we had quite reached the bar, but that we needed something. The way the guidelines were written, I thought, were not quite right and a little bit constraining in the current environment. And so um, some months ago, we decided we needed an, an, a new level that provides the public with information uh, about what we are seeing, a lot of which is self-evident. But what the government is seeing that we share with the public, uh, not on a sporadic basis, not through news leaks of, of communications with law enforcement, uh, so the public has this. Um, that is, Pierre, that's a, that's, a, that's a good observation. And in my view, it highlights the new environment we are in, which includes the very real prospect of terrorist-inspired attacks that can happen with little or no notice. So we were relying upon a model for how we inform the public that does not accurately take account of the current environment, which is why, in the judgment of a lot of us, it's important to create this new level of information for the public to say to the public, there's a, there's a real prospect of terrorist-inspired attacks, of self-radicalization. This is what we are doing about it. This is what you should do about it in the public. Yes, in the back. Um, you mentioned some months ago you considered Yes. I would say earlier in the year than that. Uh, we've been consulting with the interagency, with the national security community on this, and um, um, we reached the point where we could not only roll out the new system, but a new bulletin today. Okay, one more question. Secretary? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Right. So the public does get a lot of mixed messages. Uh, how would this system, if anything, change that? Would that would it still be would it still be a situation where you're getting different messages from local officials than federal? And my second question is: a recent Pew poll showed that the confidence of the American public in the government's ability to stop terrorism is at an all-time low since 9/11. What do you have to say about that? Two things. First, this new level of NTAS, of a bulletin, provides a common baseline for what the national security, homeland security people at the federal level are seeing and what we assess to be the case. A common baseline for people in Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, 
and every place else. Um, so it's informative in that respect. We have a common baseline for what we are seeing that's not done sporadically. It's not shared just with law enforcement. Number two, <clears throat> very often in, in homeland security and in national security, good news is no news. And it's important, as I said in my opening remarks in my view, to continue to remind the public that every day um, somebody is working hard to prevent, and this happens on an everyday basis, prevent somebody from traveling or boarding who has a potential terrorist or troublesome affiliation. That happens every day. Every day there's somebody denied boarding on an aircraft with a prohibited item. Every day there is somebody denied entry to our country. Um, every day there is an interdiction of illegal narcotics, of weapons, uh, a discovery of something on the border um, to protect our homeland. The public doesn't always hear about that. Every day there's a terrorist plot that is being investigated, um, and on a routine basis there are arrests being made for those who are being prosecuted for material support or something else under our federal laws. And so one of my goals, certainly, is to note for the public all the things that we are doing on their behalf um, and to say to the public, you can help too. Um, we, are, we are in a, do, we're in a new environment. Uh, we're in a new environment where terrorist-inspired attacks are things that can happen with little or no notice. And there's a way to address that. It is a whole-of-government approach that involves the military, it involves law enforcement, it involves heightened security, heightened presence in law enforcement around the country, it involves building bridges to communities that are being targeted by terrorist organizations. Uh, imploring them, if you see something, say something. It is always the case, in my view, almost always the case, that if someone self-radicalizes, there's somebody close to that person in their family who saw the signs. And so by building bridges to community leaders, um, families, religious leaders, and others, we can encourage people to come forward. And so <clears throat> this is a multifaceted homeland security response to a new environment which includes public awareness and vigilance, which is what we're doing here today. Okay. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you.